boy, am I pleased with you. I asked you to bring me to safety, and that's exactly what you did. Indeed, having a follower to aid me is more efficient and frankly pleasing. With you on hand, I shall conquer new horizons, plumb the depths of knowledge hereto unknown, and scale the dizzying heights of future discoveries. She stops to get your breath. What I mean is, <clears throat> I'd like to express my deepest gratitude. I foresee immense potential in our future cooperation. Well, I'm happy to help. Hand in hand, we will unravel the greatest mysteries and accessible to the minds of ordinary people. Just imagine it. I, leading the way proudly, staring into the faces of gods themselves, and you, my loyal follower, walking behind me every step of the way, writing down my deepest thoughts and admiring the profundity of my intellect. Yes, the profundity of her intellect. You gotta, you gotta admire. <clears throat> if there's one thing I know, she's got a profundity of intellect. I leading the way proudly. Oh, I mean, I already said that if you, if, uh, if we hold hands, you won't be able to go in front of me and lead the way. You are the catalyst, which when it reacts with my intellect will allow the, the latter to grasp the very essence of the universe itself. Um... Do you always express your delight so effusively? Hmm. What? Who are you? Nina stares at you for a while, bewilderment in her eyes, but then it's replaced by recognizing. Oh, yes, my new follower. So, <clears throat> what am I supposed to do? Oh, yes, I must provide some verbal encouragement for your, your as uh, yet modest achievements and try to induce you to strive for more of such encouragement. This is the principle of underpins any training. She frowns, but only for an instance. Ah, I see your modest nature was unsettled by the overabundance of my gratitude. I do apologize for putting you in such an awkward position. I will never praise you again unless I forget. But let's get back to business at hand. Your new assignment will be to take me to the inconspicuous ruins that are located in an even more inconspicuous valley, allowing between Kinnebrus and Dresden. As soon as is reasonably practical, I'll mark the place on your map with a large red cross so you won't forget it. Well, what is so uh, special about these ruins? Kinnebras. Alright. So, well, that went away. I'm supposed to be so I can see stuff. Alright. Gotta love it when you're stream manager. Stuff you're supposed to be looking at goes away on you. Okay. There it is. I don't know why it went away on me, but it did. All right, so some time ago I was walking around the border of the Wonder World, world Wound and I met a strange person. He was wearing a fray gray robe and his face was hidden behind an odd white mask. Of course, I didn't miss the opportunity to ask him about the reasons for absurd appearance. And do you know what he said to me? He said, I am the answer. But what is the question? 
then he walked off in a direction of the world wound. Hmm. I am the answer, but what is the question? You know what? That is in the way, isn't it? I'm almost trying to figure out where this should because that kind of was in the way of all that, wasn't it? Okay. Let's try that. That that seems to be a little bit better over there. Just a little bit better. That way at least you can see the pictures. <laughs> All right. The next day, after I had already forgotten about the encounter, I had another similar encounter. This time I met an elven woman. Dudging by the pointy ears sticking out from behind the mask, I am the answer, but what is the question? She said before taking off toward the world wound. And then I realized, everything became clear to me. I know a mystery when I see one. Consider this one of my myriad talents. Nino rubs the tip of her nose. After all, all these geysers weren't simply on their way to a costume party, were they? After examining several maps, I determined that they were all heading in one direction, to a place not far from Kinnebris, a place which is marked as Nameless Ruins. Even in ancient Sarkorian maps. That's where I need to go. Unraveling the secret of that place will be my greatest discovery. It will secure my place in history, or perhaps even in legend. Well, how do you know where you have to go? Do you know how I find a beehive in a forest? You need to catch two bees, set them free in two different locations, of the forest and remember the direction they fly in. Then you take a map and draw a line showing the bees routes. The place where the lines intersect will mark the location of the beehive. Fascinating, yes. By the way, forest bees do not make any honey. Just in case you were wondering, forest bees do not make any honey. I use the beehive principle here too. For a couple of months I tracked the strange people in the masks and observed the direction in which they were traveling. I collected the coordinates, mapped their estimated routes, and made a discovery. All the routes intersected at the nameless ruins not far from Kinnebras. Well, what do you expect to find there? I haven't the slightest idea. If I knew that what was hidden there, I wouldn't be so eager to go. Uh, these ruins aren't very far from Kinnebrash. You could easily go there by yourself. Why do you need me? Ninio's eyes seem ready to pop out of the sockets in surprise. Don't you see? This is a legendary secret place. Who knows what may happen to me after I lift the veil and uncover the workings of the universe. My mortal body may be unable to contain all that knowledge, or perhaps I will ascend to become equal to the gods themselves. Lofty goals, lofty goals. I need you to write down everything that happens to and report my fate to the interested parties in the Absalom. And don't forget to praise me as I deserve while you're there. <laughs> you know these ruins that of yours may just turn out to be that, ruins. Ninio shrugs. In that case, we'll write this experiment off as a fail and start another one. I don't know which experiment I'll try next. That's all I wanted to know. Oh my gosh. Well, now you know. So off we go. Ninio frowns. Did you just make a rhyme? Perhaps I've discovered poetic talent in myself. Hmm, let's conduct an experiment. Quickly, say any word. I'll try to find a rhyme for it right away. Uh, science. That's when thinkers make alliance, intellectual defiance. Ah, not the best rhymes, don't you think? Well, this experiment was unsuccessful. We learned that I have no poetic talent after all. Nino sighs. 
but it's no reason to despair. Having a gift of poetry in addition to my inexhaustible intelligence would have been a little too much. Besides, I am catastrophically busy and have no time to spend on, on writing poetry. Uh, okay, tell me about yourself. I'm an explorer, a pilgrim, a yet-to-be-recognized scientific luminary, further author of the Encyclopedia Gorionica, and rector of all Absalom's universities at once. Future rector, I should say, Ninio, speaks in one breath, as if reeling off a practiced monologue. That information should be enough to satisfy your curiosity, because I doubt I will be able to tell you more than that. You see, the brain of any given individual can contain only a limited amount of facts. I only expend my memory on things that are truly important. The laws of thermodynamics, divine esoterica, planar geography, things that will lead uh, Golarian to, the, to a brighter future. Ninio rubs her nose. Besides, what if I make a great discovery, but I won't be able to remember it because my memory is full of outdated or useless information? What a nightmare that would be. What a loss for the whole of Colerion. That reminds me of um, <clears throat> uh, Hercule Poirot was a detective. And he didn't waste his time remembering things that were unimportant. Um, so it, it, it kind of, he's kind of, uh, patterned after, uh, after the Hercule Poirot, the detective who only remembered the important stuff. Uh, how did you become a sci? I, I really want to know why you, why, why you're a were fox, but you know, that's beside the point. Uh, uh, you have a circle tattoo on your shoulder. What does it mean? Uh, what is the thing? You have a circle tattooed on your shoulder. What does it mean? Cast a sideline glance at her shoulder. Oh, that. I do not remember the circumstances of its creation, but I like it. I prefer to think of it as a zero. No, nothing. A center point, an origin of coordinates. It reminds me how much of the unknown the world there is to explore. Boop, boop, ba -doo. All right. Uh, don't you remember how you got this tattoo? That information is irrelevant. I've decided to forget it. Where are you from? That information is irrelevant. I've decided to forget it. How did you become a scientist? That information is irrelevant. I've decided to forget it. I sense a pattern here. A very interesting and long pattern of I've decided to forget it. I have decided to forget it. <laughs> oh my, oh my. Alrighty. Okay, let's see what else we got here. How can you just decide to forget important pieces of information? It's called selective memory. Usually have it when I get in trouble. <laughs> this is just one of the many talents. The secret is to stop thinking about the thing you want to forget, and the main thing is not to remember anything you don't need, to filter it. To get it to get right in the essence, I'll teach you someday. Unless I forget. Unless I forget. What? I, I still don't understand why I'm not going. Why are you a were fox? 
What is the encyclopedia you're working on? The Encyclopedia Colarionica will be published in 100 volumes, 1,000 pages each, plus the author's addenda. Appendices, appendices added by future co-authors and critical commentaries. Addenda indexation is still in question. Nino looks highly embarrassed. I just like the number 100, but I'm not sure that I'll be able to keep within the established word limit. It will be a magisterial piece of scholarship that will become a part of the mandatory curriculum of every educational institution worth men mentioning. In it, I intend to describe every object, item, event, fact, and pers uh, personality that is present on or at least somehow related to Galerion. That's a lofty goal. My calculations show that I have completed no more than a few thousandth of a percent of this monumental book. Do you remember your pa parents, your past, or is all that irrelevant too? All of it's irrelevant on the grand scale of the world. I have no reason to remember such things. Uh, forgetting your origin, knowing nothing about who you are and where you come from. That's terrible. No. I don't know. Do, do I admire the fact that she can forget everything? I might. I might admire that. That's kind of, uh, it's kind of big, big, big brained, right? It's all big brained over. I'm just going to forget everything. Don't you worry. I'm just going to sit here and forget it. And, uh, I'll be okay with forgetting it. So there you go. Absolutely no worries about it. What the heck is that? I got some weird text. Okay. <laughs> Where is... Capable I'll stop torturing you with questions now. Uh, what were we talking about? I don't like it when you call me boy. My name's Hales. On the grand scale of the world history, your name is irrelevant. I have no reason to remember it. Uh, wow. Okay, this is becoming long and arduous. Uh, only, so, only so I know what to put for the author's name in the encyclopedia. Any names worth it? There are, and to my deepest regret, they are too many of them. You know, he's a sign would benefit grief stricken old man. The name of gods, demigods, the name of rulers, conquerors, and other persons by some reason deemed great by the people of Galarian. They etch their names into history, and uh, alas, every self-respecting educated person must know them. But these, the, but there are so many names I am happy to remember. <clears throat> great scientists, some of them divine, others mortal, true keepers of knowledge, and great experimentals. The pioneer of knowledge, Eronri, Nethis, Erulu, Vorlesh. Uh, the world when she's a traitor to humanity. It's her fault the demons evaded. Uh, don't you think? Oh yeah, she is the greatest of the greatest. Just imagine, she managed to open a rift from Galarian to the Abyss. No one knew how. No one believed it possible. No one even dreamed of such a thing. And she just did it. It was the experiment of the century. Nina wipes a tear from her eye. I would have been so, so happy if I could have been in her place. 
Of course, some part of Galarian's population died as a result of her experiment, and the Crusaders are still wrestling with its consequences to this day, but the very essence of what Erelu managed to do was a breakthrough of cosmic significance, both figuratively and literally. Well, there you go. Both figuratively and literally. Amazing. All right. Um, sooner or later, the world wound will be closed. Peace will return to Galarian. As for the victims of the ongoing war, they will be remembered as unfortunate but unavoidable sacrifices. All right. Um, I'm going to stay silent. I have to go. <laughs> She's a stalker. Nino produces a crumpled piece of paper from her sleeve and takes some notes on it. This conversation lasted approximately five minutes. No, it lasts a lot longer than that. She <laughs> lifts her chin. By the way, did you know this? Uh, that is the exact same amount of time the Inquisitors of Kinneras need to find a defendant guilty. But to, to shake off Inquisitors chasing you takes five times as long. That experiment proved that running while clad in heavy armor is not burdensome for them at all. Okay. Put a boom. Okay, we're gonna visit the nameless ruins at some point in time. At some point in time, we will visit the nameless ruins. Travel. Do, do, do. See what they gotta say. Mm -hmm. Alright. A plagued horse. Let's see. Hmm? No, I'm just want you to shoot make every that. strike count. Yep. Did we step on their toes as well? No, you're not doing it wrong. I'm doing it wrong. You won't stop us. You won't stop us. Okay, so uh, let's see. Acid splash. Okay. Just see how we do here. Is this a mock fight? Yes, it's a mock fight because it's a few plagued horses. It's not like you got something. Wow, what do we got coming a from a horse? Solid plan. Yeah, I didn't think so. 
I didn't think it was anything there. Oh, wow. Well. What happened there? Okay. Tread lightly. Tread lightly. Did you find... Really? Let's... Exit, area, exit, area, exit. I am somewhat confused. Let's just see what happens when we do this. It's just a little bit swarm of rats, right? The cart is laden with possessions looted from the surrounding areas. How's this? Used. Was this Okay. 
Everyone's just sitting way too back. Okay. Checks in. Okay. Okay, that did not go well, but that's all right. Okay. Uh. My God, bless it. Get all right. I've tolerated your heresy t for too long. The signs of recent hard fighting are obvious in the stern old man. His arm is dented and covered in blood, and his unnatural pallor suggests something more dangerous than wounds inflicted by claws and fangs. Nevertheless, his gaze is stony, and his voice, accustomed to barking orders, is harsh and clipped. He brings the blade of his sword to the throat of the beautiful golden-haired Asimir, who is being held by two soldiers. I would have had you put on the stake the day you arrived in the city. Perhaps this, then this tragedy could have been prevented. Or perhaps you should have listened to others instead of spitting accusations of heresy at anyone who stood up to you. The Asimir has been savagely beaten, but a smile plays on his bloodied lips. Who knows, perhaps we could have saved Kinebras if you had listened to my warnings about the demon's attack. If you had allowed my adepts to complete their mission, if we had worked together instead of fighting each other. The old gray-haired fellow seems vaguely familiar. He isn't the leader of the local inqu inquisitors by any chance. Be careful with him, boy. Those people place no value on science, and they believe that ignoring high-level scientific questions to be the best response strategy. Incidentally, did you know that the fastest way to draw the attention of Iomedes Inquisitors is a heartily bellowed hail bayonet? <laughs> After that, you will have precisely three sexy seconds to explain yourself, so it's best to prepare what you wish to say in advance. <laughs> Oh, the comic relief. The comic relief. Oh, God, I love that. You said yourself that you've been fighting against me all this time, you heretic. Well, then, unburden your soul. Confess before your death that your adepts succumbed to the demons and that their instigation almost deprived the city of its wardstone. The old man strikes the asthma across the face. The time for confessing has passed. Say your final prayers to your unholy mistress. You will soon be united with her. The Asperian notices you and in a loud, clear voice intones, O oh, Desna, the great dreamer, I pray to you protect my adepts. Send a brave soul to aid them who, know, who knows the price of freedom and who can distinguish good from evil. May they not share my fate and forgive Prelate Holrun for everything, including the folly he is about to commit. I've heard enough of this treasonous prattle. A split second later, he slices the Asimir's throat. Wow. That's kind of harsh. Um, no, I would be like, hey, what are you doing? Let go of him. The old man cut up in his retribution pays no heed to your words. What an ass. 
The old man slices his ass and slow. The blood, dro- uh, the body drops to the ground, and the old man turns to you. Who are you? What are you doing here? You're not a cultist, are you? See how I deal with cultists? And what is this hideous creature? Hellrone peers at Lan with, with suspicion. Lan, at your service, the mongrel ducks his head in a bow. My forebears fought in the First Crusade. I've lived in Kinnabras my whole life. You haven't ever seen me before. Uh, it must be because you don't ever venture into our underground district. We have been meaning to complain to the city authorities that our paving stones have been in need of repair for a long time. Um, Let's see, I can go Angel Mythic Path, reveal the light of heaven, behold Inquisitor, I bear the gift of an angel who died died in the caves below Kinnabras. I am no enemy of yours. Uh, how? Uh, bum, bum, bum. Okay, that's what I did. The old man frowns and whispers something, a prayer or a spell. With each word, his face relaxes. You are telling the truth. The light in your hand ha- was wrought by the power of heaven. I will keep an open mind with regards to you, stranger. And later, under less fr- fractious circumstances, I would like to ask you about how you came to receive this gift. Well, I, I went underground and I met some, uh, I found this golden, oh, never mind. Ah, silly, silly old man. Um, why did you kill this Asimir? For heresy and treason, the cultist has been spreading seditious rumors in the city for years, undermining our defenses and besmirching my name. In the end, his creatures, the adepts of the Temple of Desna, revealed their true colors when they tried to sneak into the Wardstone Chamber and perform who knows what foul magic over it. If I hadn't been keeping my eye on them from the very beginning, their plan would have succeeded, and now Kinnabras would have lost the significant protection offered by Iomade's gift. The traitors were fortunately stopped in time. I have just disposed of the leader, and without doubt, the rest of his accomplices will be found and justly punished. Um, I don't want to attack. Your forces are needed elsewhere. Irbeth Terbred, uh, warden of the city, is gathering troops in the Defender's Heart Tavern to, uh, to strike against the demons. Who, now, Terabate, that upstart warden of the city? And I suppose I've already been written off for dead. This isn't sedition, this is outright insurrection. I am loath to abandon my watch, but I can't turn a blind eye to such a blatant uh, usurpation of power. We have no hope of defeating the enemy if there is disorder within our own ranks. I'm going over there right now. I need to see what this Arabeth is up to. Ember peers intently at Helrin. I remember you. When Father and I arrived in this city, you met us. But it's true. You and the other knights tied us to stakes and started lighting the bonfire. Father died, and the one of your knights changed his mind and pulled me from the flames, but then he died too. Don't you remember? If you were burned, then it was for good reason. You say some traitor helped you escape from the fire. That is a crime in itself, which means that you have been evading justice all these years. If it weren't for the invasion, I would review your case and see that your sentence was finally fulfilled. You're lucky that we have more important matters to deal with right now. This whole rune is kind of a... I don't know what I would call him. He's he's kind of he's kind of an insane individual, if you ask me. Um, every everything he looks at, he thinks is some sort of person that needs to be burned or killed. Um, I didn't look the way he he didn't look the way he does now, all wrinkled and gray. He was young with a big mustache. Ember smiles broadly and draws a large bushy mustache in the air with her finger. You probably forgot all about me. It was a long time ago. 
But I do want to say one thing. I'm not cross with him. This knight is a true hero. He just really, really wanted to protect his, protect his city. Only he got all mixed up about who was good and who was evil. Um... Halron, you sent an innocent child to be burned at the stake. Don't you want to ask for forgiveness? Pa, hardly. Anyone can look innocent. How did the girl manage to survive the fire? And what about the crow that's always flying around her? I advise you to take a closer look at this innocent little lamb of yours. If you ask me, she looks highly suspicious indeed. You forgive him after what he did to you? He thought he was doing what was right. How, how do you know? Maybe you've done something thinking it was a good thing, but you were really doing a bad thing that hurt someone. But what if, what if I've done the same thing? You can't get angry at people for making mistakes when you might be no better than them. Okay, let's go, Ember. We don't need this, this, this arse hat. Arse hat! I mean, uh, he, he's going a little overboard. Um, God, what is the word I'm thinking of? Oh, uh, it'll come to me sometime like tonight at 3 o'clock in the morning when I get up to use the restroom and then the word will come to me and I'll be like oh yeah that's that's the word but that's usually the way it happens right yes let's go bye bye kind tonight the girl waves to help whole room with a carefree smile whole room grimaces and turns away whole room the arse hat yeah. Yeah.